Good morning. Welcome to worship with the St. Mark's Lutheran community this day that we celebrate as Pentecost. Let's see my Pentecost. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're so happy to have you with us. If you are not a member and you're um, joining us, welcome, welcome. And um, I'm Pastor Kate Lapard. Later, you will see Pastor um, Eric Dull and then Pastor Edwin Weber doing different parts of the service. A couple of announcements. Next week, we'll have a, a time change, just like we always do when summer starts. Uh, we'll have one service, though, instead of 8 and 9.30. One service at 9.30. So if you want to join us sort of semi-live, um, that's at 9.30. And we want to let you know that uh, plans will be coming out about um, how we're going to handle some of the gathering. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. From Acts 2, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come then, let us confess our sins to the one who is faithful to forgive. Come then, let us adore the one who is mighty to save. Merciful and gracious God, our hearts cry out to you, for you make us whole again. Even as we celebrate that you have come to dwell with us, we have sinned against you and abandoned your commandments. We have been jealous, possessive, ambivalent, and impulsive. We have not heeded your word, and we have not cherished your covenant. Help us to glorify you in all times and in all places, as our souls thirst for your living waters. Quench our needs and satisfy our love that we may come back to you and be sent forth to fill the world with your mercy and grace. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is at, is at work within us. Amen. From the Gospel of John, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In the obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoking mist. The sun should be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter to the Christians at Corinth. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, 
we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw it was the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's an old joke that says, if you want to hear God laugh, then tell God your plans. And if this is true, I want to tell you that God has been laughing a lot lately. You see, our false gods are being exposed all over the place by the plans we make. The God of Wall Street is being shown in its uncertainty to be a God of the haves as we watch it go up and down really not certain where it will land. The God of our job is making us question, really question, what is essential, really essential, and laying our identity bare. The God of commerce has caused many of us to scramble buying too much toilet paper, too much meat, too much with a fear that tomorrow there will not be enough. That scarcity will again rule our land. And our stomachs grow, our hearts ache, and the world goes on. But our plans, well, they are being put on hold. And today is Pentecost and the prayer, Come, Holy Spirit, seems that's much more appropriate. Today. In our stories this morning, our disciples have had their plans smashed to smithereens. In three years or one year, depending on which gospel you read, the disciples were taken from their former identities by an itinerant preacher who asked them to follow him. The fishermen, the tax collector, the spirit possessed women of the night dropped everything. To follow Jesus. Maybe, just maybe, this man who knew things no one should know would restore Israel to its former glory. Maybe, just maybe, this Jesus would again show who really is chosen. Maybe this Jesus who could calm the seas, multiply bread, turn water into wine, and even raise the dead would actually renew the face of the earth. Maybe, just maybe this Jesus would set things right again. But betrayal, denial, and violence, a 
apparently rule the day as it seems to rule so many days. The spirit of Jesus that helped draw the disciples to their new calling is seemingly lost through Jesus' death on Calvary. So I wonder, I wonder if these first apostles dropped everything in hopes of finding themselves, in hopes of figuring out their bigger purpose, and they were all in for Jesus. But now Jesus has died. The thinkable, unthinkable happened, and in the midst of grief, where in the world would God call them next? Disciples are stuck in between. Between returning to their former callings or staying in Jerusalem as Jesus asked them to do. We start to see that something has been imprinted on these disciples' hearts, though. Something is still stirring inside of them, looking for expression, but they need time to deal with the very real grief and some very real questions. But resurrection is happening, and the Spirit of God is alive and well. Tongues of flame show up on those gathered, and suddenly those who never understood one another before start to understand, and Peter speaks. He preaches his first sermon, and he understands something that he did not understand before. It is something that causes us to look backward. And what I'd like us to do is look back and specifically now really focusing on this Luke-Acts Pentecost story. You see, we get a John Pentecost story that's happening the night of Easter when Jesus comes and breathes on these disciples behind locked doors, his breath. But in Luke-Acts, that story really continues and we really see a sense of where the church is going how the church is beginning. So I want us to go back to the beginning. Right after Jesus is born, Jesus is taken to this man, Simeon, who has the Holy Spirit upon him. Simeon, that song that we often sing and will sing at the end of the service, Lord, now you let your servant go in peace, for your word has been revealed. Simeon sees in Jesus the hopes that the prophets talked about before and sees in Jesus the hope that all of creation shall see the salvation of God. Simeon understands something that the prophets understood before them. Did you hear how Peter in his first sermon refers back to the prophet Joel? As he refers back, he says that the Spirit of God shall be upon all flesh. And then also through Isaiah, where the salvation shall be seen by all people. The Spirit is continuing to call. And just ask the disciples. Sometimes that Spirit calls you to do things you just don't want to do. The Spirit gathers And sometimes you have to rub shoulders with those when you know that six feet really isn't even far enough to be away from those folks. Spirit can call you into uncomfortable places. The Holy Spirit continues to enlighten, and sometimes that truth the Spirit gives us is really difficult to take. And the Spirit sanctifies, but sometimes being made holy isn't all it was cracked up to be. Holiness, after all, means that you know better than most that things really aren't just about you, but rather lives of service. And the thing is, though, these acts of the Holy Spirit of calling, gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying that Holy Spirit has been doing for years past and will continue to do so long after Jesus walked on the earth. But there's one more thing that the Spirit does. The Holy Spirit keeps us. You see, the Spirit can't be contained by locked doors or lost wages 
or the loose ends of our life that seek to unravel our sense that things can somehow continue. As the disciples in the gospel sit behind locked doors, and as those 100 plus followers of Jesus gather in Jerusalem in the book of Acts, what we see in common is the Spirit enters in through the most difficult of circumstances. The Spirit enters into the disciples' very real grief and shows them that even their grief isn't as real as resurrection. It is the Holy Spirit that shows us that resurrection is just not a one-time event. It's not only Jesus who is resurrected. The coming of the Holy Spirit shows us that each day we are resurrected. As we go to sleep each night, the day we have just lived dies. And as that old prayer proclaims, what is done is done, what is left undone is left undone, and still a new day will come. The Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that God imprinted on the hearts and the stories of Isaiah, the same Spirit that called the disciples out to bear a different light, is the same Spirit that continues to blow in around and through us as we navigate uncertain futures with the hope that is ours in the resurrection of Jesus. And that's it, isn't it? As long as as there is a spirit, there is hope. As long as there is a spirit, God isn't done with you yet. As long as you have breath to breathe, as long as you have thoughts that come to your brain, God isn't done with you yet. It is true that wherever we put a period, God shows us that it is but a comma. The virus is but another comma in our lives. Another comma for the Holy Spirit to enter in to use the many gifts you have been given. So let God laugh at our plans. Because that same God, that same Spirit, will enter into our locked spaces where you live in fear and breathe on you a Spirit that will take hold and help you through whatever struggles are ahead. We pray the prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.
join me in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of peace. Bring an end to civil unrest and justice to those who long for it. We pray especially this day for the family and friends of Floyd George and the many people in our society who faced injustice for who they are. We also pray for all of those who live in unfear and uncertainty in this time. Give us hope that human injustice will be no more in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for a comfort, especially Jerry, Gretchen and Jim, Steve, Farah, Eric, Debbie, Ryan, Bowden, Lanny, Laura, Nancy, Chris, Gloria, Arlene, Leslie, Terry, Aaron, Janice, Nick, Bob, Joyce, Margaret, Knud, 
Lyra, Eleanor, Shelley, Carolyn, Cody, Robert, Brian, Gail, Ron, Billy, and Bridget. Lord, in your mercy, healing God, give protection, endurance, and encouragement to all health care workers, first responders, and other essential workers. Bring your healing power to bear on all those who are ill with COVID-19. Give comfort to all those grieving the loss of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death into new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. If you are gathered with folks in your home, please share a, a sign of Christ's peace with one another. And if you are joining us today alone, Know that the Lord is with you and that you are with us in spirit. We have no offering plates to pass this day, but we give thanks nonetheless for your continued generosity in this time. Whether you are giving through one of our many electronic means or putting a check in the mail, every contribution you give to supporting our ministry in this place helps and we thank. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This time, I'd like you to invite the children to come close to the screen. I'm going to share a book on this Pentecost. When we think about the coming of the Holy Spirit, we often think about baptism where we are marked not only by the seal of the Holy, by the mark of the cross, but also by the Holy Spirit in the anointing that happens. So here is a, a story called Water Come Down, the day you were baptized. If you have not been baptized yet, we will rejoice in that day when it is possible for you. Water Come Down. I am the sun, I am fire and light, I'm the first one at the end of the night who heard of your naming day. God told me to whisper the news of my sister, a child will be named today. I am the cloud, high, white and proud, or black and flashing, roaring out loud, I never could hide my mood. So on the day when the sun came by to whisper that you were to be baptized, to be washed in the fire of God, and to shine with the light of God, I laughed, O oh child, I laughed till I cried, till the tears of rejoicing came down from my eyes. Thunder, I, under, I thundered out loud, for the kid who is loved by a cloud. Maybe you can see the rains in this person, author's thoughts, are that the rain is coming down as God cries, cries tears of, of laughter. 
I am the rain coming down from heaven, one drop, ten drops, ten million, and seven, down, down to the water, the ground, to make the good grain grow. But on the day when you were baptized, I rode the wind to the edge of the skies and cried to the sun, sun, shine on me for the child below so the child can see a flaming, raining bow. The rainbow is always a sign of God's promise. So after the rainstorms, dear child of mine, whenever you see it, the rainbow is a sign that God is with you and God is kind. God will never let you go. I am the wind. I blow the rain like needles against your window pane. Or I carry it down in misty showers to rinse the trees and wash the flowers. No one can see me, but I am the power, the breath, and the spirit of God. That day when the sun told the cloud about you and the cloud told the rain and the rain told me too, I wanted to wash you clean and good. I wanted to blow the water to you fast as fast as I could. But the earth below was cracked and dying, trees, no leaves, the flowers dying, and seeds could do no good. So I poured the rain on the thirsty ground, which drank and drank the good seed down, the seed that makes your food. I am the seed that grows the wheat, that makes the bread the children eat. But I, before I rise, before I grow, I go deep down, I die, the dark earth underground. Water gives me life again, and I become the golden grain. I am the water that came from God, from the love of the sun and the sister, the cloud, the water, and the fill that filled the skies. And I am the water of colors, for we, Rain and the sun and the wind and me made a bow to the edge of the skies. And I am the water, went under the ground to turn the whole world upside down, to bring the dead to life. And I am the water that flows in a river, the river of life forever and ever, ever. Yes, I am the water came down from your town to find you, child, and you I found the day you were baptized. I am the water they washed you in, your head, your heart, your soul, your skin, clean of the devil, clean from sin, the day you were baptized. Your family was there that holy day. They heard the good baptizer say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, three in one, I baptize you, dear child. I am the water that fell on you three times with the words that made you new while everyone smiled and smiled. And upon your forehead, the cross of Christ, and in your hand, the light of light. O child of earth and skies, burning as bright as the angels at night, you are God's love and God's loveliest sight on the day you were baptized. All of us now on earth and in heaven, one mouth, ten mouths, ten million, and seven, greet you, friend. We're glad you came, so glad we stand and applaud, and we call you by your brand new name, beautiful, beautiful child of flame. You are the child of God. You are a child of God. And know that God is holding you in these uncertain times. Whenever you're afraid, whenever you're happy, whenever you're sad, always remember you are a child of God. Have a great day. Let your servant
receive now God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. God is calling us today, leading us into tomorrow. Together, let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thank you for joining us today. Blessings to you on this day.